I ask that you clearly state your name and school attendance area. Limit your comments to two minutes and we'll be using a timer and you will see the timer um, buzz when your time is up. Um, the board neither endorses nor censors any opinions expressed in public input. Uh, please keep all comments civil and respectful. Uh, no comments or applause from the audience. Please feel free to wave your hands to show support of a speaker. And we will go ahead and get started. So up first is Gordon. And if you'd go to the microphone there, and then as I said, state your name and attendance area. And we have the time. Uh, you can, yes, please leave it on. Yeah, let's make sure the microphone's on. Hi, uh, my name is Gordon and my child's in the Maywood Mill School area up in the Renton Islands. And so uh, I am a homo sapien. Um, that's how I identify. And I am um, here to comment on the February 15th meeting for input regarding superintendent search. And so the meeting is specifically says, the title on the web page says, Meeting for Parents, Guardians of Color. And I'm here to say that I am deeply offended that you used the word color, and I am deeply offended that that got past any web censors. Um, it is discrimination to say that there is a specific meeting for um, people of color. Or you could have used something else. I believe people of color is the politically correct term to use. But to use that is really in poor, is poor and discriminatory. So can a white person not go to this meeting? Your uh, spokesperson has uh, responded to the uh, Rants article in the Seattle Times and said, no, it's not. But when you ask people to look and you read the title of this um, this meeting, it is self-selecting. And so that is really um, unfortunate that in this day and age, we're still, you're segregating and you're saying, hey, only these people come to this one. Or so I don't know if this one, if you're going to have interpreters or not for people of that uh, English is not their uh, first language. But I would really ask that you will remove that term for the meetings and just let it be open for anyone so that whoever reads this on your webpage would say it is uh, open for anyone. Uh, yes, thank you. thank you for those who respect our, um, our meeting and shake the hands. Um, as I said, it's, it's not really a dialogue, it is input, but I do wanna say a few words. Um, I'm sorry for anybody who feels that that was an indication of segregation. Um, it was really an intent from the board to be able to hear from uh, our historically marginalized families. We wanted to be able to have an environment where they could share freely and honestly and feel vulnerable. And so we have heard from those families before, and we understand that sometimes the environment isn't comfortable. So having them surrounded by other people similar to them makes it easier. So our intent was to create a more welcoming an environment and to be more inclusive versus to exclude anyone. Um, we did change our language on the wording. We listened to some people that have given us feedback. All of the meetings are open to any families to attend. And we invite you to either attend one or more of the focus group meetings or fill out the survey. But our intent is to be expansive and inclusive. So. I will go ahead and select the next person. And this is Peter McDonald Dougal. Uh, thank you. And if you'll come up and give your uh, name and attendance, Eric. I'm Peter McDougal, and my attendance area is Issaquah High School. Uh, I am here to object to the wording of this email that was sent to my family. Uh, about this meeting that's coming up for the selection process of the superintendent. Um, the, the thought process that goes into putting the word color in it and where we're supposed to self-select based on how we look, which meeting we would go to and attend, I think is just absurd, uh, offensive, and probably illegal. 
Uh, I, I dusted off the uh, Civil Rights Act of 1964. Um, I didn't read the whole thing, but I didn't have to. The language is in there. Uh, that's against the Civil Rights Act, what you did, or whoever wrote that email or structured those. Um, and if that's not enough, the Washington state has its own civil rights legislation. Uh, just if you need more support, it, the wording is quite clear. Um, and I would say, you know, I, I get wanting to be inclusive and all that. If you're wondering how to structure these meetings so that you're inclusive, first and last, consult the Civil Rights Act. Uh, that'll prevent any of this problem that's going on. Um, I, I'm fully aware that the community, you know, can have different opinions, but I think overall, uh, this inclusive and educated community of Issaquah that I live in resoundingly rejects this type of language and this type of tone and tenor. How do I know that? No one that ran for re-election this year, and I have your campaign materials, would ever put anything like this into your campaign materials. You would not be re-elected or elected. If you say we're going to segregate meetings based on how you look, you wouldn't even get past the ballot. I mean, come on, this has to stop. Thank you for your input. Next up is Wendy Giora. Board members <clears throat> and superintendent, we are all here because we care about this school district and its community. Let me begin with a few definitions. Racism, prejudice or discrimination directed against a person or people based on their membership in a particular racial or ethnic group. Discrimination, the practice of unfairly treating a person or group differently from other people or groups of people. The law prohibits discrimination. Per the 1964 Civil Rights Act, likewise, separate but equal meetings are also illegal. Plessy versus Ferguson. Oh, yeah. Recently, I was almost elected to this school board. When I received the Issaquah E-News promoting a separate meeting for parents of color and parents of students of color, I breathed a sigh of relief that I was not a part of this school board. I would not want anyone to think I could be part of such a blatant discrimination. By holding a separate meeting for people of color, it is the same as saying, People of color are not welcome to attend the other meetings, so we have created a separate one just for them. We are an integrated community, all wanting the same thing, to hire the person best qualified for the job as superintendent, the one who will care about raising up all of our students. Why are you trying to divide and separate us by color? Really, is this the example you want to set for our students? Shame on all of you. Per the law, color should have no part in selecting our new superintendent or any decision made by this board. Thank you. Theme going on. <laughs> Superintendent, just want to thank you for your service. Get your name into oh, the so microphone is, so we have it in the record. My name is Swen Nader, and thank I live you. in Issaquah. I'm uh, the husband of Wendy Gila. So thank you so much for your really hard work, great work. Isco School Board, my name is Swen Nader, and I live in Issaquah. I've worked at Costco headquarters for over 26 years. And my wife, Wendy, ran for school board last year. I read that ISD is hosting meetings with parents to discuss the hiring of a new superintendent. I think it's wonderful that you are seeking parent input. However, I read we, are, we will also provide an additional meeting for parents and guardians of color and parents and guardians uh, with students of color on February 15th, two days before the meetings with parents and guardians. A local radio show heard about this and asked, Alicia Engels, ISD spokesman, why the segregated meetings? Alicia replied, all parents are welcome to attend any of the four parent meetings. They are not segregated. But Ms. Engels' words do not match the heading of the February 15th meeting, 
which implies the meaning is reserved for parents of color. And because the ISD did not provide a rationale for this meeting, we are left to make our own conclusions. And I'm not even gonna go there. Now, you may say that that's not the intent, but we all know appearance is everything. In fact, it has been said appearance is truth. John Wooden, my college basketball coach and one of the greatest teachers of, of our time, when asked about teaching, often quoted this anonymous poem. No written word, no spoken plea can teach our youth what they should be, nor all the books on all the shelves. It's what the teachers are themselves. Thank you for your input. But you know, I'm children going, learn by me, watching please, what adults Everybody do. else has respected the two-minute timer. what they are learning by watching you, this ends up... You Sven, try to please, justify. please so respect please, the two-minute timer. Thank you very much for your input. I'm going to call the next person the to the children microphone. children are watching you and you setting your example of segregation. The next person to be that. called up is Tanya Goodman. My name is Tanya Goodman, Creekside Elementary. Please excuse the hat and the sunglasses. They are medical necessities, not a fashion statement. Over these long months, you've heard a lot about masks, vaccines, funding, and other nuanced comments. On January 24th, each of you received my public disclosure request, which contained the following. Request for all the documentation, warning labels, manufacturer information, proof of informed consent, proof of FDA authorization, ingredients, and double-blind placebo tests for efficacy of every vaccine product that the state mandated the teachers to have in order to be employed. Request for all the isolation tests as they met the Fry and Daubert standards in Washington state. Request for a copy of the governor's emergency proclamation with the governor's seal on it. Good luck finding that one. No one's seen it yet. Request for all funding sources, all communications from anyone who promised funds or threatened to withhold funds, all communication from any entity with regard to COVID mandates. In the records request, it contained a list of 10 laws that the schools are breaking federal and state and a request for proof of any statute that overrides those laws. This is a brief summary of my request. My sentiment is shared by others. Yesterday, y'all received a beautifully uh, cheerful package that was full of the same requests from others in our community, grandparents, parents, and concerned citizens for children. <clears throat> I took a beating in an accident, hence the medical attire I mentioned. It is extremely painful for me to be here and comment, extremely. But like many parents, we have to draw a line at some point Oh, how much is gonna to be tolerated. When my little guy cannot lift his mask to take a drink of water in the classroom, because the sweet teacher is so scared and wants to control the spread, we've got some problems. I see the timer is about to go off here. So I will say this, as physically painful for me as it is, I will remain present, pleasant, and committed to working collaboratively. Thank you very much for your input. All right, I have one more name here in the room or two. And then I see there are four names on the Zoom. And so I've captured those names. So I'm gonna finish up with the two that are in here in the room. And then I'm gonna go to the four that I have captured on Zoom. And then we'll close up our public comments and move on to our next agenda item. So next up is Mark Bowers. Good evening, board members. Thank you for the opportunity to present before you today. It would be helpful if you started by stating your name and attendance area. It sure. just helps to put it into the record. I'm Mark Bowers uh, from the Issaquah School District. Um, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to speak and I'll try to keep my comments within the two minute range. Um, my concern is about the curriculum in this school district. Um, Issaquah is a vibrant and diverse community. We're a generous and affluent community. We are capable of great impact locally and on the world stage. In order to prepare our children for success in today's challenging world, we must prepare them to be confident and self-reliant. Our curriculum must emphasize the values common to all Americans. 
the values that equip them to compete in a challenging world, uh, we must refocus uh, on the trades and the professions. This requires curriculum that encourages unity, not division. How all function together. Our students must be trained in practical and useful skills like balancing a checkbook, how to vote, how to prepare for the workplace. We need to focus on the things that make America great, and we are great. Our unabridged history, social studies, civics, math, and science are the things that we should keep our focus sharply on. In other words, we must refocus on matters that unite us and prepare us to work together and succeed in the local, state, national, and global levels. <clears throat> As a 12-year Issaquah school parent, I do not feel my daughter was prepared to compete on the world stage. However, she went on to uh, gain an athletic scholarship, a four-year degree at the University of Hawaii. I ask that you take these matters into consideration as you guide our curriculum. Thank you very much for your input. Thank I appreciate you. it. All right, our last one in the room. Oh, let's see, Barbara Holly, And is this on an item not on the agenda? It, uh, it, is it related to the levies? No, okay, then go ahead. Probably it's not related to an agenda item. And at the beginning, state your name and attendance area and there's a two minute timer. My name is Barbara Holly. I live in Issaquah School District. I'm a mother and a grandmother of children that are in this district. On February 7th, I was shocked to read in your ISD bulletin that you announced a separate meeting regarding the selection of a new superintendent for parents of children of color and parents of color. Absolutely shocked. I don't think you're familiar with RCW 4960030. You should read it carefully. Freedom from Discrimination, Declaration of Civil Rights. It's a valuable thing for children to learn and clearly the board members. I don't know which one of you proposed such a meeting, but none of you stood up to say, I don't think that's a good idea. The right to be free from discrimination because of race, creed, color, national origin, citizenship, or immigration status, sex honorably discharged, veteran or military status, sexual orientation, or the presence of any sensory mental physical disability or the use of a trained dog guide or service animal by a person with a disability is recognized and is and declared to be a civil right. You have, by putting that in your bulletin, you have, <laughs> you're not compliant with state school policy, state law, federal law against discrimination. I can't for the life of me understand that you have done such a thing. In all my years of living in Issaquah, of over 45 years, I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. We do not raise children to recognize color. We raise children to recognize the character and the content of your soul and your character. Every one of us as parents tries to raise responsible children. And yet you put something like this in here and you do not teach those values to children in the schoolroom along with the basic mathematics, language, history, and you are definitely Thank you very much failing. for your input. I appreciate it. And that's the ones. Yep. Do the hands. Thanks, folks. All right. I have four people who are on our Zoom. And once we finish with those four, we're going to continue with our agenda. So first up on our Zoom is Courtney Eldridge. And if you would turn on your video and your microphone just during this part. And again, for you, you, you on Zoom, please make sure you state your name and attendance area. I know sometimes the name on Zoom isn't quite right. I don't know, Stephen, if they need help getting. Yeah, um, it's. Oh, I don't almost. know if you can hear me, but it's not letting me uh, start the video. <laughs> Actually, it's hard to hear her. If you can hear yeah, I don't know if there's up. anything we can do to have a little more volume. Oh, there we go. Um, okay. Can you hear me okay now? now? Okay. You can go ahead and give your input. Okay. So there's actually two of us. Um, my son is um, going to speak first, um, and then I'm going to speak. Is that okay? Well, um, sure, you have two minutes. 
so he has two minutes and I have two minutes. Sure. Yes. Yeah. So okay. <laughs> we'll start with one of you and okay. speak and you have two Perfect. minutes and then yeah. we'll go ahead and start a new timer when yeah. the second person speaks. Perfect. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. All right. so my name is Kaden Eldridge. I am an eighth grader at Isquam Middle School. Thank you for allowing me the time to address the school board. I'm worried about the safety of my fellow students about at Isquam Middle School. In the fall, all of us just came out of quarantine and we didn't really remember our rules and expectations, but we are expected to know all of these things right off the bat. We did not. I think a small percentage of students chose to do things they knew they shouldn't do and wouldn't have done before a year of quarantine. I think the problem was after students began doing these things, they realized there wasn't any punishment, which made things worse. An example of this is at IMS right now, every single girl's bathroom is closed because some of the female student body at IMS were skipping class and vandalizing the bathrooms with minimal punishment. We have a lot more fights at school and sometimes good kids get pulled into the fights. Last week, a girl pulled a knife out of her backpack and attempted to attack another student. I don't know if we need more adults or stricter punishments, but I'm asking you to help me and my fellow students. Thank you for your input. We appreciate hearing from you. All right, Courtney. Thanks, guys. Um, my name is Courtney Eldridge, obviously. I'm a mother of four boys, two currently attend ISD schools, one's graduate of Isqua High. I serve as the Isqua Middle PTSA president, um, and it's my role in this position to advocate for every student to reach their full potential supporting staff, students, and families. And so today I am here advocating for IMS. The IMS feeder pattern has a higher than average at risk population. And in September, Issaquah Middle School was identified by the school board as being a school with a significant need in need of additional resources or FTE. In the fall, the IMS students returned to socialization and sports and extracurriculars and teachers actually attached to bodies. Um, IMS students also returned um, emotionally unsettled and unable to conform to normally accepted behavior larger than normal classroom sizes. At IMS, core class average is about 32 students and many are at 36. They have new anxieties, technology addictions, and woefully inadequate social emotional supports. Small incidents escalate quickly because students can no longer emotionally regulate to resolve basic conflicts. Staff will return to twice as much standardized testing to measure learning loss and repeated reassurances from ISD that everything is back to normal, while witnessing behaviors from students that are anything but normal. The lift, as they say, has been heavy and is simply getting heavier with a severe lack of staffing. A student misbehavior is now labeled a forgotten learning behavior that needs to be reinforced. Who then supports, reteaches, and reinforces these forgotten learning behaviors? I would encourage each of you to please look into the data of the other middle schools in ISD because I don't believe IMS is alone in our concerns. Here are some statistics from IMS. We have one principal, one assistant principal who's also a COVID supervisor, two counselors, and one Swedish counselor for referrals. IMS has 810 students. 75 students are on 504 plans, but this number continues to rise substantially this year as students are rapidly being diagnosed with anxiety and depression. Thank you, Courtney, for your input. We appreciate hearing about IMS. Next up is Catherine Stuckel. I might be saying the last name wrong, but if you could go ahead and turn on your video and audio. Thank you. Hi. Can you hear me okay? We can. Go ahead and state your, well, state your name so you put it into the record and we'll go from there. Hi, my name is Catherine Stickel. I live in the Issaquah School District. My husband's son and I moved to Issaquah in 1998 after researching the area's best districts for inclusiveness, especially for children with disabilities. My son exited Issaquah School District nine years ago. However, after receiving the Issaquah School District's email about the February 15th parent input meeting for the new superintendent, I must speak out. I am both saddened and angered that this once excellent school district has shrunk so low from where they were. Segregation was outlawed in the 1960s, segregating parent meetings by the color of their skin to give input on a new superintendent is the ultimate form of segregation and discrimination. It is wrong, bottom line. If you do not cancel this February 15th meeting, then any, every one of you will be held accountable for the damage caused by embracing racism and holding segregated meetings for parents based on the color of their skin and the color of their children's. Shame on you. You are creating divisiveness 
amongst the great community par of parents in our district? And what kind of a message do you think you are sending to our community? And even more importantly, what kind of example are you setting and teaching the children? That they too shall be divided because of the color of their skin or other differences because you're segregating their parents based on that? Don't you believe we all as a whole entire community want the best qualified person for the job of the superintendent of the district? I do. Can you see anything positive to be gained as a result of trying to separate and divide parents? I can't. I am requesting that you cancel the February 15th meeting and hold meetings only for the entire community, not separate factions of it. I'm also calling on all the mom and papa bears up the, out there parents to rise up against the school board's brazen act of racism and segregation. And remember this, the next time they vote for school board members. Thank, Thank you, you very much for your input. Folks, yeah, just go with the wave of the hands. That would help us move our meeting along. Next up is um, John iPhone. So if John comes on to make sure he states it, there we go, name and attendance area. Hi, my name is John <laughs> Whipple and my son attends Endeavor Elementary School. And um, I, I came to also show support against the meeting with segregation. Um, I found it very concerning. I've never attended any meeting like this in the past and never thought I would, but I felt I had to speak out. Um, I hope you'll reconsider, and I, I'm really heartened to see other other people in our community speaking out against this. I, I, I applaud them. Um, it, it, it's not okay to separate people based on race. Thank you. Thank you for your input. And then last up uh, on the Zoom is Santa Mingo. I know that's not your your. It's it's, it's Christy Santa Domingo. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So um, give me a second. So hi, I'm Christy Santa Domingo. I'm an IMS science teacher, equity lead at my school, seventh grade team leader, and a parent of two kids at Beaver Lake Middle School. And I'm speaking today to advocate for more supports for IMS in the form of a 1.0 FT PBSES person, an additional counselor, an additional admin. Um, I love my um, admin, they're amazing, but I don't know if I would say their workload is sustainable at this time, but that's my personal opinion. Um, I have been hearing for seven years that IMS has more need than other middle schools. This is not a new thing. This year, that means that we have a 0.5 PBS, yes, FTE, two counselors, two admin, just like all the other middle schools. But I'd like you to please consider the equity in that. Um, we would like what we need in order for our student population to th thrive. So for example, according to the King County Housing Authority, there are four link low income housing in Issaquah, three of these four feed into IMS. As compared to other middle schools, I've been informed we have the highest number of IVPs with a third of these students on behavior intervention plans. And finally, please compare the mobility rates. That's the number of students who come and go. Um, last month alone in January, we had 18 new students, many of these coming from many schools in their life, which could indicate instability. And we wanna be there for our students. Mental health is a priority. And please give us the resources we need so that we can be the amazing school community that we can be. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you very much for your input. I think that got through everybody on my list. And again, to the item in our e-news about our uh, focus groups related to our superintendent search, all the parent meetings are open to anyone that would like to attend any of them. Again, our effort was to make a inviting uh, meeting environment for our historically marginalized families who we have heard from and have sometimes found it challenging to share in these environments. So again, meetings are open to all families and you're able to attend any of them. All right, then we are going to move on with our meeting agenda and we are now at the approval of our consent agenda. I move the consent agenda be approved as presented. Second. All right, our consent agenda is a meeting management tool. The board has reviewed all the items within of the consent agenda and we've had it for days to review. And so this is an opportunity for us to re uh, review, approve all the items all in one fell swoop. So all those in favor of approval of the consent agenda, please say aye. 